Hi everyone, my name is Bruce Emus and I'm going to do a class for you today on automotive in-vehicle uh, networking. On uh, in-vehicle networking is going to cover uh, 10 sections. We're going to start off with multiplexing and we want to take a look at the very beginning of how this uh, technology began. Uh, we want to move then into distributed embedded systems uh, on down to the atomic level a little bit to look at uh, distributed functions. Uh, then we want to move in and look at uh, uh, the use of off-the-shelf requirements. Uh, and we'll take a look at the Open Systems Interconnect, uh, an ISO standard, and also OSIC. Then we'll move into the hardware area so, so that we can take a look at some of the physical layers that have been used in in-vehicle networking. And then on to the CAN protocol. And we'll find out why CAN's the ubiquitous protocol. Uh, in, that, uh, in that presentation. Also want to take a look at some of the other protocols that have uh, grown uh, to be popular, also LIN and FlexRay. And uh, after that we move into in-vehicle software and, and we're going to see that software has played a major role in in-vehicle networking. Uh, second to last, AutoSAR. It's the next generation in-vehicle software solution. We want to learn a little bit about why did this become an important direction for the industry. And in our last section, we want to take a look at the future. Uh, we have uh, the idea of a connected vehicle coming and, and also some other ideas beyond. So let's move into our first presentation. Okay, in part one, we're going to take a look at uh, multiplexing uh, in the very beginning. And one of the important things to understand about this idea of in-vehicle networking uh, or multiplexing is the fact that there's a tremendous number of different viewpoints. We can go all the way up to the highest level of the system. We can move down to subsystem levels. We can look at the, the, the use of networking at the level of modules. Uh, we can go down to the communication buses and we can also look all the way down at the transfer uh, medium uh, that's used to contain the information that we move. So you're going to see us switch around quite a lot during our, our uh, uh, to see all these different really viewpoints kind of fallen by the wayside. Uh, the basis of in-vehicle networking today is really based on the idea of small area networks. This term, small area networks, was originally coined by Intel, but actually has fallen by the way wayside. Actually, it never really got to, uh, to be too popular. But it is an appropriate name for this networking solution. And if you look at the different aspects inside small area networking you'll see that it covers a lot of the territories that we're going to actually investigate over, the over this entire presentation. We, the small area network deals with the transmission medium. Uh, it also deals with message structures. It deals with data structures in which, you know, what are the data items we're going to move on the, on the network. Uh, it deals with the addressing structure. You know, how are we going to point at the different objects that are inside uh, the network. And also has to deal with conversation structure. We'll see that con conversing uh, within vehicle networking is an important aspect of and even takes a plays a role in the control of the, the different functions that merge to become the number one protocol used for in vehicle networking. Uh, it can interconnect quite a lot of different modules and, and, it, and it's become the de facto standard. Uh, the, the, the acronym CAN, which is used almost uh, exclusively, it stands for controller area network, but we very seldom ever hear that, that, uh, that, that name. Uh, it is an open uh, standard. Uh, it was originally developed by uh, Bosch. Uh, their engineers felt that if they could create a, um, in, uh, a, uh, a, a multiplexing solution, uh, that they could use it to sell their uh, particular tier one modules uh, a little bit better. The interesting thing was is when uh, uh, Mercedes took a look at it and BMW, they basically told Bosch, look, good idea, we want it, let's get this, this idea out into the industry. Uh, CAN's uh, pretty old, about 20 years old. Uh, uh, it was patented. It had a major revision from version 1.2 to version 2 We're going to find out in the next several uh, presentations uh, actually where we are today in the state of in-vehicle networking. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the questions that, come, that comes up some from time to time are, are there new protocols being suggested? And the answer really is, is yes, there are. Uh, one of them might be uh, the power line carrier uh, networking. This is a new, new particular. This is a technology that's been around for really maybe uh, 15, 20 years. Actually, uh, it's, a, it's a technology that that basically combines uh, data with uh, using the power lines. 
Uh, biggest problem with that is really is the cost uh, low enough. Uh, we'll talk about that. Keep in mind also that uh, the car companies, all the car companies, have basically followed a very similar path uh, and have had almost the same type of experiences technically and business-wise in moving through this realm of in-vehicle networking. So that concludes our first uh, section.